Let me start by thanking you for the invitation to speak at this very timely and significant event. Your work and efforts, including the organisation of this year's Free Iran World Summit, are crucial as they help to draw attention to the many severe human rights violations perpetrated by the Iranian regime. Through its aggressive foreign policy, the Islamic Republic of Iran poses a serious threat to the Middle East and the international community in general, be it through its nuclear program or through its financial and logistical support for various terrorist groups, such as Hezbollah or the Houthis, the regime fuels instability in the region. On the domestic front, the Iranian regime has totalitarian control over all sectors of society and is guilty of countless human rights violations. For me, the undemocratic process and the election result are a clear sign where it needed that the ruling elite in Iran is primarily interested in perpetrating, perpetuating its own power which happens at the expense of the Iranian population, uh, a population that desperately seeks more freedoms and an end to tyranny. The regime is currently facing one of the most critical periods since it came to power. The country faces heavy international sanctions while the economy is weakened and more and more people in Iran express their dissatisfaction with the theocratic regime that is in place. The situation for ordinary Iranians is simply dire. Since 2018, the country has experienced nationwide uprisings and protests. And as we know, more than 75% of Iranians are forced to survive on average incomes which are below the international poverty line. The result unmistakably shows a profound alienation between the leadership and large parts of the population. The Iranian people want economic well-being. They want to live in a country that can maintain a good relationship with other nations. The course of the Iranian government has offered them the exact opposite of this, as its ideology, corruption and mismanagement has plunged the country into what is now an existential crisis. Of course, free and fair elections have never existed since the foundation of the Islamic Republic. But the recent election saw a gross abuse of the system as Raisi was designated as the next president. Mr. Raisi functions as a guarantor of the regime's survival. That is the purpose. He will help to further transform the Islamic Republic into a totalitarian system in which the hardliners uh, dominate and continue to hold the levers of power. He has been intimately involved in the brutal practices of the regime over the years. He was instrumental in the officially denied mass executions of opponents uh, of the regime at the end of the 1980s, as well as in the suppression of the protests in 2009. And as head of the judiciary, he was also involved in persecution of dissidents until very recently. And as things stand, his election will most likely coincide with an aggravation or exacerbation of human rights abuses. So therefore, I fully understand and I absolutely share the various concerns that have emerged within the international community after the designation of, of Raisi. His selection represents a further obstacle to the normalization of relations with Iran. His elevation will exacerbate domestic and regional problems since Iran is involved in one way or another throughout the Middle East in advancing ballistic missile programs, human rights abuses, and of course, supporting and financing uh, terrorist and extremist activity. Overall, his designation has sent a clear signal to the world, which is not a positive one, neither for the Iranian people themselves, who struggle for more rights and freedoms, which are continuously denied, nor for the international community that seeks to normalize its relationship with Iran.